Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering, where I will be introducing the mathematical techniques used for calculating hydrostatic loads and for finding the point of action of the load on planar and non-planar surfaces. In the coming videos, we will have a further look at the techniques for more complicated situations involving stratified liquids and non-planar surfaces, or in other words, curved surfaces. To introduce the techniques, consider the situation shown in the diagram here of a static liquid which is in contact with a non-planar bounding surface, which we will denote S, and which is relative to the coordinate axis X, Y, and Z, where Z is defined to be in the upward vertical direction. Here, S is the set of points X, Y, Z that makes up the surface. There are no shear stresses present in a static liquid, and so the force applied by the liquid to the surface S is due entirely to the normal stress distribution in the liquid, which is also known as the hydrostatic pressure. The resultant force, F, with the bold font denoting the fact that it's a vector quantity, applied by the liquid to the surface is given by F equals negative the surface integral of P times N with respect to A, where P is the hydrostatic pressure and N is the unit outward normal vector to the surface. And note here that a unit vector has a unit length, which is of magnitude equal to 1, and the term outward defines the vector as being directed away from the surface at the point into the liquid. In general, both P and N will vary as the position on the surface changes. The above integral is known as a surface integral, which we covered in the previous video when finding the centroid of a planar surface. The link for that will be in the description below so you can check it out if you haven't already. The product, Pn with respect to A, is evaluated on the surface, and the values of this product integrated over all points that make up the surface. Additionally, each coordinate direction, x, y, z, has a corresponding unit vector, i, j, k, associated with it. Therefore, the vector quantities f and n can be written in component form as f is composed of f with respect to the x-coordinate direction, fy and fz, and then expanding this out as an expression, f is equal to fxi plus fyj plus fzk, and then the exact same can be done for n. So that is the introduction to the technique for calculating hydrostatic loads and for finding the point of action of the load in general but now let's have a look at planar surfaces specifically. The diagram here depicts a body of homogeneous liquid, which just means that it has a uniform density, and this liquid is bound by a planar surface. With these conditions, carrying out the surface integral in the previous equation is simplified. On a planar surface, the unit normal vector, n, is the same for all points on the surface, as a planar surface only has one normal direction which doesn't vary with position on the surface. Therefore, as n is constant, it can be factored out of the integral, and so the previous equation can be simplified as f equals minus n times by the surface integral of p with respect to a. This can further be written more conveniently as the hydrostatic load, f, is equal to minus fn where the force, F, is equal to the surface integral of P with respect to A. This is convenient as when finding the load acting on a planar surface, our primary task is to calculate the magnitude of the load, F. The direction that this load acts is just opposite to the unit outward normal vector to the surface, which is negative N. Additionally, the hydrostatic load, F, acting on a planar surface can always be represented by a single resultant force acting at a single point of action on the surface. This point of action is known as the centre of pressure, which is denoted CP as you can see on the diagram here and is determined using moments. So now we have laid out the groundwork to be able to calculate hydrostatic loads and for finding the point of action of the load on a planar surface. In the next video, we will work through the calculations for finding the hydrostatic load on a horizontal base, and then the video following that, we will do the same for a vertical wall. I will leave the links to both videos in the description for you to check out, 
and if you are not sure how to use the surface integral, I highly recommend you check out the previous video on finding the centroid of a planar surface, which I will also link in the description, as this will be required for the two videos I just talked about. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.